What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be doing round two of two of this mock draft. So round one was absolutely insane and uh, maybe like some things to tweak on it. Of course, I mean every single mock draft is going to be tweakable. I know I make mistakes all the time. That's why I want you guys to give me that feedback because over time I like perfecting it more and more so that by the time the draft comes around, we have a really good idea about what the teams need what they should be going after and what the proper value of those players are. So continue to do that. Don't be a dick about it. I want to hear your criticism, but remember, I mean, we're just here to try to make content better, not just to be assholes. So let's have some fun here. Let's get right into round number two. Uh, the Steelers have made a crazy trade with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers and traded away Deontay Johnson in the third. Uh, you guys push back saying that you guys are already in cap shit. That's 100% true. So that's on my oversight there. We're going to continue pushing on because teams know how to manipulate the cap very well. And Keenan Allen might be a cap casualty. So we'll, we'll continue just pressing on thinking that the Chargers found a way. Because Deontay Johnson's talent is incredible. And I think he'd be a very good fit for Justin Herbert. Regardless, the Steelers have already gotten Jordan Addison as well as an offensive tackle and Anton Harrison. So at pick number 32, the right thing to do is look at guys like Trent Simpson. Uh, getting that linebacker in there certainly is totally worth it. This is my board right here, by the way, for you guys who are curious. Uh, yes, it is a very unique board. And I'm going to scroll down so you guys get to see a little bit more of the players who are going to be a little bit more relevant in this mock draft. So back to it. Um I think the right move here probably would be to go Trenton Simpson. It sucks that we don't have Brian Flores here to be able to train him up as a linebackers coach, but it makes total sense why he would go to Minnesota to be a DC. Other guys to consider, Mozzie Smith would be a very nice defensive interior for us to groom, but I'm not fully sold on Mozzie being that high of a talent. I rewatched how uh, he played against TCU and he was still getting moved versus TCU. I don't think I have him that high on my board. I'm trying to see where I do have him. And uh, looking at it, he's at 68 on my board. So, you know, nothing insane. So I don't think that he's really worth it at this point for me, even though he'll probably be overdrafted for another team. I don't think the Steelers need to be that desperate because we're pretty good in free agency anyways at, draft, at bringing in those types of talents. So Trent Simpson to me is right now my runaway favorite. I think he's the best, well, I think Drew Sanders is the best linebacker in the class, but if I am the Steelers, I'm probably going to take a high upside linebacker because of the fact that, you know, we already have kind of like a low bar in terms of the linebackers that we do have. So why not? Like, you're not going to be disappointing yourself if Trent Simpson takes time to develop. Uh, and that's really, a, I guess, a shitty reasoning to do it, but I think his ceiling is the highest. So I'm saying the disappointment factor, not there because we're kind of used to the like mediocre linebacker play. You have Miles Jack there to be a good mentor, and I really do think he could be special on this team. He also does feel like a Steeler, so I would love to see Trenton Simpson being a Pittsburgh Steeler. Pick number 33 for the Texans. Uh, we'll do a quick little recap as well, so you guys get to take a peek as well as myself. Uh, Texans went C.J. Stroud as well as Brian Breezy. And there's a lot of shit that went on in this mock draft, so if you guys have not already checked it out, you probably want to to get caught up. So Breezy and Stroud. Uh, I think that other positions you can go after is edge rusher. I think D'Amico would love a guy like B.J. Ojolari. Doesn't exactly fit what he had there in San Fran. He usually had the bigger dudes. Uh, I would love to go Drew Sanders here, though. I got some pushback from my boy Mike on whether he could be a Sam, uh, Mike linebacker or a Sam. I mean, to be honest, I do think he can be a Mike linebacker. He shows a lot of field awareness. He is very, very smooth with his mobility. I think he has what it takes to be a Mike. Yes, he hasn't been playing a Mike linebacker or like an inside, but I do think he can definitely develop into a star. And this is exactly the team that I'd want him to go to. Uh, so going Drew Sanders here, I think with D'Amico Ryans, who is also a former linebacker, he's going to value that position. Definitely somebody where, like to me, I think it's going to be an absolute steal. Pick number 34. Uh, I want to, yeah, I want to make sure Drew Sanders was in my top 32. And he definitely is. He deserves to be there. Uh, he was my linebacker too until Tommy Eichenberg returned to school. So Tommy will probably be my linebacker one next year or Jeremiah Trotter. I digress. Pick number 34. Uh, you guys talked about moving back from that number three spot for the Cardinals. And honestly, I am not against that. So I know that like we ended up getting Jalen Carter. 
because, I mean, the Seahawks got Will Anderson at five. So we already addressed that position, and it's incredible value. But if you can pick up two first-round picks, then address the cornerback position, and then maybe an edge rusher or a linebacker position later in the draft, not or later in the first, not a bad move. Not a bad move. Yeah, you're giving up on a super talent, but at the same time, there's a reason I think coaches didn't want to go there. I mean, Brian Flores went to multiple interviews, if I'm not mistaken, for you for a head coach. So I think you guys were trying to move back and rebuild. I think that means that you're probably trying to gain capital for the future rather than hit on a superstar because Brian Flores would probably love to sign on if he can get Jalen Carter there at number three. So we'll definitely factor that into the next mock draft. Um, guys like P.J. Ojolari are so good for this team. I want to look at the offensive linemen that are still available. Available. You got John Michael Schmitz here. You also have Cody Mauk. And I really like the idea of Mock on this team. He is a true left tackle, but he's been playing a lot of interior reps. So you already have a guy who's experienced as a tackle, but he's also going to be really good as a guard. And his movement skills are incredible. So... Uh, he's going to be playing a guard for you guys for a while, but there's a reason for it. He has shorter arms, and I think he fits perfectly there. It's a guy that has the mobility needed to protect Kyler and his mobility. I think that's definitely going to be a very smart move on your behalf. Pick number 35 for the Colts. Man, dude, BJ Ojolari still here. This is a team that could take him. I would love to see him pair up with Quiddy Pay. I, I love it. But uh, we went Will Levis. I want to see other interior offensive linemen. I think John Michael Schmitz could totally step in and play that guard role. I think this is what I did in my last mock draft, but he is going to be getting that hype. Perfect, especially if Jeff Saturday is on the team uh, as the head coach, which I don't think it's a bad idea. Uh, I think that would be a very, very Je Je uh, Jeff Saturday type of pick. So I think it's great. I do. Put him in as guard because, uh, again, centers can play guard. It's not that big of a transition. It's someone who's played center and guard. Doesn't look like it, but uh, seven years on the offensive line. It's much tougher to move a guard to tackle than it is a tackle to guard or a center to guard. So, anywho, pick number 36. We have already gotten Will Anderson as well as Osiris Torrance. That's a pretty stacked first round. Now... I think Mozzie Smith's the perfect fit for this team. I told you guys that he had some slip-ups, but this is a perfect spot for him to, you know, develop into a superstar prospect. Uh, very athletic. Obviously, he was number one on Bruce Feldman's freaks list. So it just feels like the perfect fit. Uh, pick number 37. Zay Flowers is still on the board. I would love for a team to try to grab Zay. I just don't see that many. And we traded back out of the first round with Los Angeles, picking up a future second round pick. Probably a pretty smart idea. I know you guys are probably trying to win right now, but I don't think it's a necessity. Uh, looking at the guys who are available, though, you could look at Antonio Johnson to be your guy in the slot. He also has that safety versatility. So, you know, you could take good advantage of Antonio Johnson, not just being a pure slot corner. And he could be your guys as Jalen Pitchery. I am more of a fan of Jalen Pitchery by a significant margin. But I still think that's a very good move. Jamie Robinson might be the guy I favor more for this team, though. I love him. And also, Florida State is relatively close to Jacksonville since they're both in Florida. That might be my position to target because I am looking at the offensive linemen here because I do want to guard. I'm not a huge fan of the guys except Luke Whipler. And Luke Whipler, if you draft him, you have to put him as a guard because I think Fortner can hold up as a center. Um, but to be fair... I mean, when you lost Cedric Van Pram, we did end up losing out on some good offensive linemen. I really want to take a DB for this team. It's not worth it. There's way fewer offensive linemen than there are defensive backs in this class. And I'm glad I'm glad to say that we see some guys like Sidney Brown taking big steps up. Glad to see that. Uh, Raiders, you traded for Aaron Rodgers, but also traded away Derek Carr. So you ended off grabbing Christian Gonzalez. That's a really nice fit for your team. Uh, you already got a defensive back. Linebacker should be at least considered here. Uh, you definitely need linebacker. Uh, Jack Campbell would be a perfect Raider in my opinion. Definitely somebody who's high on my priority list. You could go DBDB DB for sure. I don't think it's necessary. Right tackle wise, I don't see anybody remotely worth it. That's just me. I don't I don't really like this class that much in terms of the tackles. Uh, I don't think interior offensive linemen's worth it at this moment. So 
when you analyze the other positions, it has to be linebacker, defensive interior is a big one. But, you know, unless it's Keanu Benton, which I uh, just found out that there's more Keanu Benton tape that just got released. So we'll study him for next mock draft uh, a little bit more because he looked great in the senior bowl. He did. I have access to all the reps. So excited to say that he did a great job. Uh, I think that's going to be the best move is to end up going after a linebacker, though. I think it is. So let's go Jack Campbell here, sticking into the primary color of black, just swapping the gold for silver. Uh, definitely a good position to target for a team that needs kind of day one starters and some good locker room presence, guys. Pick number 39 for the Falcons. I can see Zay Flowers being a great addition for this team. We ended up, I believe, going after Tyree Wilson, per usual. <laughs> Y'all know what's up. I think Zay Flowers would be a really good option at this point. I don't think that you really need to think too much about it. There's other players you definitely could grab, but the value of Zay Flowers is incredible. It, it's just, he's a really damn good receiver. My wide receiver four starting out the year. Glad to say that that's proven to be pretty much everybody's rank of him right now. A very, very talented wide receiver. I'm excited to see how he's able to play. Uh, Bears, you could get Jalen Hyatt, but that's kind of a stack right on top of the guy, Bayless Jones, you drafted last year. So other position, like other players at other positions, I think both Tank Dell and Josh Downs would compete for that wide receiver one mold. Uh, this was in a trade with Carolina. I would love just to go like Justin Shorter later on uh, or end up going after Puka. Nak oh, my man, fucking Puka Nakua. I love that man. All my heart. Um, Jaden Reed. There's some really good guys deep in this class. I don't think you need to do that. And I heard that offensive line and wide receiver are positions that you're going to address in free agency. So looking at who we got with Paris Johnson, the first, maybe not the most realistic pick in the world, but uh, I think the perfect spot here is to go an edge rusher with BJ O. Jalari. He's a top 10 player on my board. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to stick to it as um, definitely a huge steal for this team. Pick number 41 with the Saints. I know y'all got... Some of y'all got mad at me for going Lucas Van Ness over Kalai Jacansi. I don't think Kalai Jacansi fits the same role as what you're looking for. You need somebody who can plug the run. For me, I think Siaki Yika is just an absolute bum. I mean, I really have to study more of him then because I've watched five games. This guy's a bum in all of them. I just, I don't get it. You can end up. So I'll show you a guy who's great for this. Jared Clark. You're going to get him probably in the seventh round, sixth round. Hell. If you reach for him on the fourth round, it's going to be much better than spending a second round pick on Siaki Ika. There's so many better players to spend your pick on because Jared Clark is huge. He has pass rushing upside. He had that at the senior bowl. So there's no real need to spend such a high value pick on such a low value position. Hopefully you guys follow me there. So other positions I would love to look at. Again, we addressed edge rusher. Apparently Andres Pete's up for a contract. Yes, he's a three-time Pro Bowler. I don't think he's, I still don't think he's that good. Um, a quarterback, always on, always on your radar. But for me, your guys are bringing in Derek Carr. I think that my next mock draft will feature a trade with Derek Carr in it. Um, I mean, linebacker definitely is up for debate. I just don't think anybody's worth it. I don't. I'm looking at the guys who are available on the board. I'm not a fan of really many of them, especially this high. So... It sucks. This is a position I want to trade back. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because I see guys like Antonio Johnson for teams that do need that safety role. He is an absolute stud. And I think the Steelers would be a great spot for Antonio Johnson. I think we have yet to draft a corner for them as well. And we have not. So going after a corner like Tyree Stevenson, Jalen Jones, not a bad choice for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I think that's just the right spot to go. Steelers have already... That, I mean, the Steelers just need to continue capitalizing on their draft capital. And I think a, wow, the Steelers are really thin on draft capital. Um, we'll go future five and that to move up because I do think the Steelers could totally make this work and have an absolute baller season. I think they could win the AFC North with the way the draft has went for them. Uh, Eli Ricks definitely in consideration, but I'm looking at Jalen Jones here and People are still underrating the hell out of him. He's my number seven player on the board. I think that that will change. He might be my number six now. That is a McGuire slip, but uh, he's a very, very talented corner. No one throws at him. That's why no one really hears about him. He's just a very good player, and 
people just don't respect him the way they should. And it's kind of sad. Pick number 42, though. We traded up for Anthony Richardson because I don't think that might be the best move for the team. Um, by the way, we're going to go Josh Downs or Tank Dell here. I love the idea of Tank Dell in the squad to be pretty much your Devontae Smith to your essentially A.J. Brown. Um, and that might be disrespectful to Josh Downs, who I love. But uh, still going about Jalen Jones. Like, you don't hear about him because he's just never targeted. It's a little bit unfortunate. He has a little bit of a lack of athleticism. We'll see at the combine. He got invited to the combine. I'm very excited to see him get laser tested. But uh, when that comes, we'll talk about it. Definitely somebody who is uh, very much on the stock down potential list. But, you know, totally worth it for the Steelers. Great in zone. Unbelievable field awareness. He and Joey Porter are the top of the class at that. Pick number 43 for the Browns. Uh, I know the Browns, if I'm not mistaken, have a brand new defensive coordinator. Uh, and I think that going after a high upside edge rusher like Felix on DK Uzama would be a great choice. It says defensive. And I don't know what's up with this needs, uh, this needs category because it has teams like uh, the Eagles needing a wide receiver as their primary need. Don't really believe in that. You could, of course, go after not a tight end, but a wide receiver here with Josh Downs or Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt seems a little redundant. So, you know what? We'll, we'll change it up. We'll go Josh Downs here. Really good value. I mean, if you want to switch him up, you can switch him up. But really good value for a very good player. Uh, Jets, if you get Antonio Johnson here, that's kind of a dream. You ended up trading the first pick for Derek Carr. Yes, he might not have that value. We'll see about that. It's an estimation. You know, it's a quarterback. They're going to be overvalued. And um, Antonio Johnson would just add to the mix so well. I think he would replace where LaMarcus Joyner is, even though he plays at a much different size and much different speed than LaMarcus. I think he's great. I really do. And you can put him at linebacker if need be. Pick number 45. So pretty sure this was a Brian Branch. No, it was not. It was not a Brian Branch pick. Uh, it's Darnell Wright. So yeah, I got some feedback on that. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Darnell Wright. So I already know it's coming. But uh, also, quarterback is not a primary need. You can kiss my ass, especially in this class. I think Darnell Wright's an absolute stud if he's trained properly. He's not going to be a day one guy. He's not. But he has the athleticism and the size. The thing is, he's like 340 pounds, but he moves better than any tackle in the class. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. He has the size. He reminds me a lot of Penny Sewell. Might be because he wears 58. But he is really awesome. Uh, so looking at a DB here, by the way, Jamie Robinson and Sidney Brown are just so... they're They're built to be Patriots. I think Sidney Brown is that special. I want to give him the hype he deserves. He should be probably a first round pick. Has not, he's not even made it onto my big board fully yet. So I am so excited to be able to put him there. I want to see some all 22 on Sidney Brown before I really do do that. But even in the one-on-one -on -one reps, as well as like the red zone reps for the senior bowl, dude was balling the fuck out. And that's where I fell in love with Kirby Joseph last year. I think the same thing could happen for Sidney Brown. Pick number 46 for the Packers. Uh, we ended up, again, trading Aaron Rodgers. So you got Jordan Love there sitting with uh, Miles Murphy as well as, if I'm not mistaken, Brian Branch. Incredible value, right? Uh, incredible. So you address the defensive positions. Now you can look at these tight ends. And, like, I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's selective running backs too, RIP. Uh, Darnell Washington as well as Dalton Kincaid. You can't go wrong here. Luke Musgrave, he didn't surprise the way I was hoping to. Um, at the senior bowl. He, he never shocked me in the way that I was hoping. I think Don Kincaid would be a great choice. Again, Darnell Washington would be awesome too. I'm going to, I mean, we could change it up and go Luke, but you have enough speed as it is. I'm going to end up going after Don Kincaid. I think he's an easier translation. It's less of a gamble. And sometimes it's nice to get a small hit here and there. And he would be a really good replacement for Tanyan. Pick number 47. So for Washington, we definitely went offensive line in the first round because I don't remember taking a DB for him. And Peter Skaronsky is literally the perfect interior offensive line fit. So DB is the next primary position I want to go after. I really do. Uh, linebacker's not worth it. I don't know why you would put QB in there. Like Sam Howell is a beast. He literally was a top 32 player, if I'm not mistaken, for PFF last year. So kind of weird how they're giving up on him after he had a pretty damn solid last game. I think Terry Stevenson would be great, but I also think Eli Ricks might fit a little bit more. 
So going after another Bama corner, never a bad thing. Pick number 48. So we traded back. Now we can sit and kind of choose what we want to go after. Kind of sucks that we went edge early, but we already know they like to go edge early. Tight end, I think, is a sneaky need. And I would love to hear from Saints fans, especially Keegan, who is my resident Saints fan, um, telling me about what you guys think of like Luke Musgrave and Darnell Washington to this team. Because I think that'd be a very nice option for like a squad looking for something reliable. You could go Jamie Robinson to replace that Chauncey role for sure. Uh, but I don't really think this team needs much. I'm going to go after a wide receiver though. I would usually go Rashi Rice just because I think he's a perfect fit. But at the same time, he played very poorly at the Senior Bowl. And I think he doesn't really deserve to go this high. Uh, so I'm actually looking at Jalen Hyatt here being an amazing compliment to a great route runner there in Chris Olave. Having that speed on the outside is going to be beneficial to whoever plays QB there. Uh, pick number 49 for the Lions. Uh, Luke Musgrave would be awesome. I don't think you need a tight end at all. You guys have, I mean, I'm a huge Mitchell fan. So, you know, I, I'm going to be a little bit biased here. But you got Bijan as well as traded back and ended up getting uh, Devon Witherspoon. So you got DB. You ended up getting also um, a running back. So defensive interior still, in my opinion, could be used. Keanu Benton. Pretty damn solid. It's a good spot to get Keanu as well. He has some very good reps on the interior, and I would love to add him into that rotation with Aline McNeil. This team has taken defensive line a lot, and it's not fully addressed yet. So I would not be surprised if they ended up going that route. I want to just take a quick peek at linebacker. Noah Sewell seems to be their move, so they might push that need down the board. Ivan Pace is awesome. Totally want to see him get a little bit more hype as well. So... With that being said, a lot of people want to go see Aki Ika. I can just feel you guys looking down, like just staring at me. But I mean, Jamie Robinson would be so good there too, as like maybe a slot. I don't know. This is a tough spot. I think guard actually might be your best move. And we're going to take guys from Michigan. We're going to go with Lusaguna Lua Timi. He had some big missteps there at the Senior Bowl in his one on ones, but. He did end up adjusting. That's why I like to see. He didn't make the same mistake twice. He made different mistakes different times. But ultimately, he was actually able to develop and have better day two and day three performances than day one. That's a good sign because I love to see an offensive lineman that works on himself. Pick number 50 for the Buccaneers. Uh, Luke Musgrave would just be such a good steal at this point. Andre Carter who is great too. Uh, let's scroll down so you guys can see a little bit more of my board. But I think going after the good old Darnell Washington seems to be the perfect move. I'm pretty sure we went after a DB in round one, and we did. So Darnell Washington is the pick here. Uh, pick number 51 for the Seahawks. Man, Luke Musgrave. I know that y'all hate when I go after a tight end for this team, and respectively, I understand. Um, JL Skinner. Oh, we got the resident Seahawks fan in here who literally said he will like come at me for going after him. And... You know, I'll skip on it this time. I will. I want to change things up a little bit. So we got Mozzie Smith. We have Osiris Torrance and we have Will Anderson. That's a pretty good mix. Pretty good mix. Uh, looking at other positions you could address. It, I hate to say it, but wide receiver is something you could look at. I don't see any of those top end talents that could fit where maybe Dwayne Eskridge was supposed to take off, which Dwayne's my boy. Dwayne's my boy. It sucks. It sucks to say it. Uh I don't see anything better, though. I, I know it sucks, but I don't really see anything better. Uh, you could go a slot corner slash safety. I think like there's not much you need to address. Uh, quarterback's not worth it here at all. And we could trade out of this spot. I forgot we do have trades. So you got Luke Musgrave on the board. I would see a team like the Chargers being a very, very big spot for a guy like Luke Musgrave to go. Uh, let's see if there's a team that wants to get a tight end. I can see the Cowboys doing it. I mean, I know for a fact I'm going to probably go tight end for the Chargers anyway. I'm going to do a two-spot move up here. Well, no. I mean, Sam Laporta would be a great option right here for the Dolphins. Um, I think, actually, the Jaguars would not be a bad fit for Luke Musgrave. So we're going to trade up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a very small move up, so it doesn't really require much. So we'll just send that pick number 127 in. I also don't think the Jaguars need very much. So they're going to move up and take Luke Musgrave, who 
is an elite level tight end who's going to be a great understudy if they can franchise tag Evan Ingram. Pick number 52. Already went a wide receiver with Deontay Johnson in the first round. Uh, Sam Laporta would be such a good fit here. And I actually think I just screwed over the Dolphins, and I did. Sam Laporta is a great tight end, by the way. I have him um, as high as Michael Mayer. Like, I do think he's that special. Uh, you could end up going a corner based on the fact that you might cut um, Byron Jones. And if that happens, I think Garrett Williams would be great. I think he would. And you could go the U Miami guy and Tyree Stevenson, but Garrett Williams, you guys have already brought in DBs from Syracuse. Seems to make sense. And it's a really cool way of showing some love to a player who I'm very, very, very passionate about. Uh, pick number 54 for the Bears. Uh, now we have gotten, who have we gotten for him? BJ Ojolari as well as um, as Paris Johnson. It's a pretty good start. So I would still look at defensive interior here. you got Keanu Benton, who is near where the Chicago Bears play. So Wisconsin and Madison, obviously pretty close. So the scouts have seen him. Scouts have definitely seen some Keanu Benton in there. Uh, I think that that might be the best move because Keanu has shined out in his one-on-ones. I think that would be a very good choice. Of course, PFF needs to update their board because they're extremely lazy, but, you know, it is what it is. That's is. They're just sipping on the Kool-Aid. Pick number 55. This might be a good edge spot because we went a Lusagoon here. Um, just triple checking to make sure I haven't got an edge rusher yet. Yeah, I've got one Bijan as well as Devon Witherspoon. Let's go after an edge rusher. Let's do it. I think that Andre Carter would be awesome on this team because he is developmental, but Felix on your DK Uzama being that outside um, edge rusher would be great. I think that's going to be your best return. Isaiah McGuire, another dude who I, I really liked, but I mean, you guys know I had him at my number two spot on my board, like number two. He just, he didn't train right in the off season. I have to acknowledge the fact that he did not work on himself and make himself better. He did not improve in any way, shape or form. I have to knock somebody down for that. So that is what I am going to do uh, for the Seahawks. Again, I just, this team doesn't really need much. It really doesn't. That's why I like going quarterback for you guys. I don't think this team needs much at all. It sucks that there's not really a good center left. I don't think Steve Avila is that great. Uh, still might be worth taking at this spot. We already went guard as well. So Andrew Voorhees doesn't really make much sense. Uh, I mean, again, Jail Skinner is the perfect pick for this team, man. Like, I can't deny that. It, he's really damn good. So uh, I'm going to go Jail. I'm sorry. I tried to move back to get rid of him. That's just not the case. Pick number 57. I'm going to go DB for this team. I think that's the right move based on the guys who are available. Um, I don't know why I clicked tight end, but I think going a DB would be the right move. Tyreek Stevenson is great. I love him to death. Uh, the Cowboys, man, you still could get, I mean, there's no boundary corners here that I love. I would move back and get maybe DJ Turner. DJ Turner's great though. I actually might go DJ Turner here. Somebody who uh, you guys can see number 52 on my board. I saw, I did not think he was that good. The more I watched him, I'm like, wow, this guy's very impressive. You know, he has some lapses in coverage, but he looks better than he was a year before. Uh, definitely somebody who I think could be a, very, very viable option here. Checking out what we did in round one, though. I think we went after Emmanuel Forbes, and we did. So I want to give a shout-out to DJ Turner. Uh, looking at the wide receivers, obviously Rashi is going to probably be a cowboy. He's going to be a cowboy or saint in my eyes. He doesn't like being in the cold. Uh, obviously, he's my buddy here at SMU. So I know for a damn fact he posts every time it gets cold, which to him is below 50 degrees. Understandable. But... I think offensive line, you could look at, there are some tackles on the board, but I think the right thing to do, um, I mean, man, I wish DB, <laughs> I would love to have gone after uh, DJ Turner for this team. I think running back could be at least viable. You could look at Zach Charbonnet to be kind of like that Zeke replacement. You could, of course, look at Jameer Gibbs. Tight end wise, nothing there. Uh, this could be a good trade back spot as well. You got good edge rushers here. I think a team that's looking for an edge rusher probably should at least be intrigued with this spot. Uh, Eagles, we went after an edge rusher last time. So what are some teams that need an edge rusher? Because there are some good ones. Andre Carter should not be slipping this far. Uh, Steelers could be a little bit more aggressive, but we already traded that third round pick to acquire the new first. I could see the Cardinals moving up here. Andre Carter fits perfectly with the Cardinals, but 
they should also be trying to increase the amount of picks they have, not decrease it, because they do have some big needs. Uh, edge rusher, I think I've already gotten for the Seahawks, right? Yeah, we went after Jalen, uh, not Jalen Carter, but Will Anderson. Not many teams that need an edge rusher anymore. Again, Steelers, but we don't even have a pick for them. Uh, you could look at the Titans making a stronger move up. Uh, you could see the Patriots trying to be aggressive, but when are the Patriots aggressive? And it's just not what they do. So kind of kind of in a little bit of hell here. I wish I could go after a different position, but I don't see anybody willing to trade up for these guys. So let's go Jameer Gibbs. Let's do it. Jameer Gibbs, the guy. Uh, you could go an edge rusher there with Isaiah McGuire. I do know that, but uh, Jameer Gibbs is going to be that Tony Pollard type that does work very well in your offense. To be fair, Kellen Moore is not there anymore, but we'll see what happens. Pick number 59. So uh, this is perfect spot for a DB if we've not already gone one, which I think we went offensive line with Dewan Jones. Uh, Jamie Robinson's a perfect fit. I think he's going to be an absolute superstar on this team. He was able to lock up Rashi Rice essentially in one-on-ones. And, you know, if I get to see a DB do that, and he's getting a lot of hype from other spots, because again, no all 22 on him yet. Um, I'm going to be very favorable towards his evaluation until I get proven wrong. Pick number 60. Uh, going to triple check 99% of this is Michael Mayer, and it was. I think the right thing to do at this point probably is to get an offensive tackle. Blake Freeland, Matt Bergeron, both very solid. You can go whichever way you want. I am going to go Blake Freeland. Pick number 61 via San Francisco. So this is your second pick. And somehow, some way, you can get Will McDonald or Andre Carter. Uh, Will McDonald fits a little bit more of that Hassan Reddick role, and he performed very valiantly at the Senior Bowl. So uh, with the right tweaking, which he has a great mentor there in Brian Burns, definitely going to be a superstar for you. Uh, this pick, we did not get an offensive tackle. We got Kalijah Kansi, who I think can add weight to fit your system better. We're going to go Matt Bergeron, who is a very, very solid tackle. Pick number 63 for the Eagles and ending off this draft. Uh, very tempted to go Andre Carter here. Very tempted. Uh, I think that going a running back probably wouldn't be an awful idea. Zach Charbonnet is kind of what you're looking for as a compliment to Kenny Gainwell. Uh, could look at another DB. Already got Joey Porter. So you got Joey Porter as well as um, Nolan Smith. Could look at a safety as well. Christopher Smith would be very nice. Brandon Joseph, I went for him in my last mock draft. Uh, but, you know, I, I honestly kind of like the idea of Carl Brooks being a dude who you do bring in and at least compete with Milton Williams. Other interior defensive linemen to look at, not really much. Uh, I like DeAndre Coburn, but he kind of takes the role of Jordan Davis. So... It's a very limited amount of picks that you can have here. 